In the order of appearance would be Senator Blackburn, but I know Senator Whitehouse has been waiting, Senator Langford's been waiting. Next in order of appearance would be Senator Blackburn. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and I'm glad we are talking about telehealth because I had that legislation in the House, and I think we were all pleased when it was picked up during COVID, and we really felt its worth and its impact. Um, I have to tell you, in February, I had the opportunity to uh, sit down with members of the HIMSS chapter in Nashville, and as you all know, they are so focused on this, this bucket of issues that we're discussing today. They're innovators, they're forward thinkers. Uh, in Nashville, our healthcare industry generates every year $100 billion in revenue, and it's responsible for over 500,000 jobs. So it's important, and any of my committee members or the witnesses that want to come to Nashville will be more than happy to set up meetings and show it off. Uh, we think it's uh, pretty important. But one of the things that came up in this meeting with healthcare innovators and physicians was the issue of consistent reimbursement policies and the need for that transparency for physicians and for patients and providers and also for um, investors to give them confidence because many of them are investing in this new innovation and new technologies which are going to end up yielding better outcomes. And one of the things I've witnessed in my years in the House and here in the Senate is before we passed MACRA in 2015, we voted 17 times. 17 times to delay the pay cuts. And this was under the sustainable growth rate formula. So that inconsistency, that amount of nerve wracking, that uncertainty around compliance and being able to meet your compliance, um, you know, this is why I think it's so important that we look at stable physician payments as we look at MACRA and has been mentioned by others on the committee. We do have a working group that some of us are going to be a part of and try to find some answers uh, to this. I know it would make your life easier. And um, physicians are always talking to me about trying to cope with operational cost and the pressure that is there. And what we have seen in rural Tennessee is the closure of some practices, some early retirements, um, consolidations in these independent practices. And what I have noticed is it has detrimental delays in care delivery, in wait times, and in access to affordable health care. So a yes or no from you all, and we'll just go right down the list. I'd like to know if you agree that the cost of providing care in practices has increased over the years, and if you agree that payment has kept pace with that rising cost. So yes or no. Has cost increased and has payment kept pace? So I, I do believe that costs increased, uh, particularly when you uh, factor in inflation. Uh, and so I think that's absolutely correct. Okay. Yes to the first question, no to the second. Okay. Costs have absolutely increased and the payment has not kept up with that. The okay. inflation has been problematic in that reason. Okay. I have the same answer. Costs increase. In then you all are right in line with Tennessee physicians. Um, I want to talk about MIPS. I know several others have talked about this. And is it Dr. Navath? Navathe, okay. Talk to me about your experience with MIPS and the administrative burden that is there with that, and then what you see as should be the changes. What lessons should we learn? What should we keep? And what should we toss? So I, I think the experience uh, that my colleagues and I have had under MIPS has, has been one uh, that frankly hasn't been that effective. Uh, so 
uh, you've rightfully pointed out the operational administrative burden that comes along with the type of reporting. And it's unclear that that reporting, the measures that we're reporting on are actually in keeping with what beneficiaries really care about. And I think that's a fundamental disconnect. Uh, I think approaches like MIPS in general have generally been shown not to be very effective at improving care. One of the challenges getting toward what we can do is uh, MIPS kind of presents this choose your own adventure type of approach. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of weird actually, right? In, in terms of trying to get a standardized set of data. I think it's very challenging to improve MIPS, to make marginal changes to it and actually get to where we need to go. Uh, I think most likely we need to reimagine it completely and potentially replace it. So you it. would say toss it and start over? I would say replace it, that's correct. Okay, that's great. Dr. Turner, I have a question for you I will submit, and it has to do with the overestimating spending and the payment policies, the physician fee schedule, so let me do that because we need to talk about the forecast error adjustments. I, but Mr. Chairman, thank you. I thank